You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Welcome back to Where You Live with uh, Gene Sullivan. I'm broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. You know, with this uh, music here, I probably should uh, come growling in. You know, ah, we're back. <laughs> yeah, let's start that over again here, okay? Start the beginning of that one more time. You got it. Okay. We're back. <laughs> That's right. This is where you live. I'm Gene Sullivan, broadcasting we're from the True North Painting live. Studio. And uh, the show is brought to you by Extreme Exteriors and American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency. As an American family agent, Kim believes that there is so much more to insurance than the policy itself. It's about providing you with dependable protection and services. Kim believes that trust and credibility can't be demanded. It can only be earned by what you say and what you do. Give her a call at 651-482-1598 and tell her Gene sent you. It's time now to hear from the Minnesota Multi-Housing Association. The MHA Minute is brought to you by Start to Finish Maintenance Contractors. Start to Finish provides 24-hour service for all your home and business maintenance needs. Call Start to Finish at 952-259-1219 for your home, for your business, for your peace of mind. When you rent out your home, you automatically become a small business owner and are subject to all kinds of rules and regulations. Fair housing laws, rental licensing, CRPs, lead paint, radon, carbon dioxide, just to name a few. As someone who provides rental housing, you'll have to learn more about your community, your city council, and your law enforcement agencies than you ever imagined. But if you properly manage your business, you'll also become an important and positive partner in the community. The Minnesota Multi-Housing Association is the most comprehensive resource you'll find for everything you need to help you successfully manage your rental business. Visit MMHA.com. That's two M's, MMHA.com. Look around the website, download the free guide to successful property management, download the free brochure about the eviction process, and learn about the many ways you can turn your small business into a good business. Now, uh, to wrap up uh, today's show here, uh, talking about this story of, uh, at best, they are fools, at worst, racists, the story of Orland Park townhomes in Orland Park, uh, Illinois. Uh, I wonder if we had just changed things just a little bit, uh, would there be the same outcome? In this particular case, we had uh, a neighbor who was uh, showing uh, racism, being discriminatory uh, in their actions and talking to uh, this uh, particular landlord in how he viewed uh, African-Americans that uh, potentially wanted to rent his unit. Uh, but what happened here was that the association and board got the entire organization involved in trying to quickly scramble and change uh, the rules and then the governing documents to make it more official and, uh, and uh, I guess more important to stick that no rentals were allowed, but it was all done uh, under the guise of uh, what were uh, racist uh, reasons for why they wanted to say no more rentals. But would it be different if it wasn't the organization? I think for most of us, I think we would understand that uh, if this was the ugliness of one individual, the next door neighbor, and not the association, not the board of directors, uh, that uh, the association would probably not have been brought up on charges of discrimination. But unfortunately, in uh, today's climate, that's not necessarily so. And that's the story that I want to share with you that uh, has taken uh, place uh, has been resolved, but uh, is exactly that. Uh, there is a condominium association uh, in the Twin Cities that I'm aware of that uh, had a landlord who was renting out uh, his unit. Now, he was renting out to someone who was a minority. They were also a single parent. And in addition, uh, this single parent had a couple children, but one of the, uh, but one child, had a slight disability. And uh, because of that, the next door neighbor began harassing the renter because of the constant noise of the child. And uh, 
What ended up happening is, in this particular case, in the Twin Cities here, the association stepped in. And they said to this harassing neighbor to the, who was harassing the renter, you need to cease and desist. Stop harassing and stop your comments uh, to this individual. Well, that person didn't. So the association uh, tried fining uh, that, indivi- that individual for their remarks. They wrote a number of letters saying you've got to stop. However, what, what has taken place? Well, the association ended up finding itself in the middle of a lawsuit and blamed by HUD for discriminatory behavior. Wow, how could that take place? You know, um, it, it just seems to me that th- there, should be, uh, there should be some protection. You know, there was a uh, particular act that uh, took place in 1997 called the Volunteer Protection Act of 1997. And uh, in it, Congress began by declaring that there is a willingness to have volunteers who offer their services to nonprofit organizations. And they understand that uh, those nonprofit organizations are able to run only because of the uh, willingness of volunteers to participate in those organizations. And they understand that uh, finding volunteers would cease and dwindle and be detoured, deterred if there's that potential, uh, potential for liability for actions against them. So you had the Volunteer Protection Act of 1997 that said, you know what, you could belong to a, uh, to a group, an organization, and one individual could stand up and just be dumb and uh, make some dumb remarks, racial remarks, and that's not going to necessarily uh, be something bestowed or put upon you. Well, that was the case, wasn't it, uh, with what I just shared with you that took place uh, uh, probably a couple years ago here in the Twin Cities. But in this particular case, the association still found themselves in the middle of a lawsuit. And I want to try and explain some of the reasons uh, why you need to be careful, and that's because of the political landscape and thinking that goes on today. Uh, number one, we need to realize that we're dealing with a government, uh, governmental agency, a department that needs to prove its value and worth year after year. Otherwise, they don't get their funds. The funds get cut, or uh, better yet, they say, hey, your service aren't needed, and the department is cut out altogether. And so you have uh, uh, regulatory agencies that want to prove their value and worth. And so they're looking for things uh, that uh, might happen and take place. But we also have uh, a, uh, a certain attitude that, uh, that's taking place in government today, and that is we know better than you attitude. Let me uh, share with you, this is uh, expressed perfectly by the former uh, Secretary of HUD, Sean Donovan, just last year, uh, on July 16th, 2013. He said, bottom line is this, because of the subtle nature of discrimination, people don't even know they've been subjected to the abuse. That is why HUD is enhancing its enforcement by initiating investigations on our own without waiting for individuals to file a complaint. The bottom line with all of this is that uh, associations need to be deliberate, they need to be smart, and they need to be careful. Because uh, in this day and age, even something with the potential hint of discrimination can lead into a lawsuit and can uh, bring an association to its ruin financially. So you need to be very careful at best with your rules and regulations, uh, how you change and amend your governing documents. And I hope you remember the story of uh, Orland Park. You remember the story of this association in the Twin Cities. And you take time to be deliberate with every new rule that you put in place. Well, that's all the time that we have for today's show. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. 
I look forward to having you here next week on Where You Live. To be loved by you How sweet it is to be loved